Hello everyone, welcome back to Strange Monkey Reviews. Today, I'm going to be discussing the new Scream from 2022, and I have a special guest, Angela from Morbid Heart Designs. How are you today? Fucking fantastic. I'm so excited to see this this movie. Like, I've been waiting for it, and it's, it's here, it's done, and it's I want to see it again. I'll just say that. Same here. I'm really excited. I saw this and I was, I, I've been excited for months. I can't believe this actually happened. A brand new scream. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? So, um, so yeah, I, let's start with likes. What did you think of this movie? Like, what were some of your favorite things that you enjoyed from this new entry in this franchise? I liked the characters way more than I thought I would. Usually when there's like an introduction of new characters, I typically hate them. And I was like, I don't actually hate anyone. So that was a surprising thing for how I usually react to movies. Uh, I liked that they held true to the franchise, but they also made it their own in their own ways. Yeah, it's... In a way, it's like it's different, but the same as well. It's mm -hmm. like you had to bring something new to the table because if it's the same old thing, your run of the mill sequel, it's not going to make sense. It's not going to please anybody. Wait, wait, wait. Requel. Requel. A requel. Not a, a sequel. One. It's a requel. So, it's not a reboot, a recycle, mm. reimagining. It's a requel. I have never heard this term until I saw this movie. I had it either, and I was like, oh my god, like, this movie's putting, no offense to all you horror nerds out there who review this, none of us yes. use that term. None of us do. I felt put to shame as somebody who talks about horror movies. <laughs> the way these <laughs> kids talked about the genre, I was like, okay, I need to get my ass into film school or something, because these kids are showing me up. <laughs> They're like, requel. I was like, uh, what? A requel? What the hell is that? Um, yeah, I also like the characters. You know, it, After a while, like you had to get used to these new characters, but I think mm -hmm. most of them have an equal amount of screen time, so you can get to know them, who they are, what they're all about. And, of course, uh, Dewey, Sydney, and Gale return. It's nice to see them again and whatnot. So it was... Cool to see them interact with these new characters and whatnot, and then you have to play the guessing game of who the killer is. Um, I liked that the first um, third of the movie felt like it was just focused on the new characters and their relationship and how they fit into everything. I did like that mm -hmm. because it helped you attach to them instead of just coming in with the legacy characters that we all love. Even Gail, even though she's still a bitch. She's still bad. <laughs> you love to hate her. Like, that's the most brilliant thing about her character and everything is you love to hate her. She's written to hate and you just, I'm there for it. But they let us get to know who's going to, I'm assuming at this point, be in the next movies uh, before they brought in the legacy characters that we're all familiar with and yeah. concluded their stories. Or hopefully, maybe, who knows? Who knows? I think if they do one more, that should be it. You know, because if mm -hmm. it's going to be a new trilogy, because, you know, I, I heard some things online that Wes Craven was toying with the idea of a brand new trilogy. You know, he, he did mention Scream 5, but sadly he passed away. But um, like you said before, about giving the new character screen time i do think it is important to give them you know give them the floor so we know about mm -hmm. them so like you said you can connect with them because if you have the legacy characters in the beginning and then all these new people come in it's like oh like who are you you know what I mean? the stakes like, aren't high enough to root for the new people right you have to <clears throat> spend some time with these characters so i thought that was very interesting out of all of the new characters, who was your favorite? Um, probably Tara, just because I, I heart her horror movie 
selection. She's got the same taste in horror movies that I do. So the entire time I was like, I love her. I love her taste in movies. My husband's like, you said that three times. Shut up, people are around us. So you're telling me you're a fan of the Babadook? Oh, I love the Babadook. I knew it. It's very underrated. And I know you hate it. I no no I don't hate it. I think it's okay. <laughs> I, think I think it's a very underrated, extremely nuanced horror movie, and I really like ones that make you think. So. I have to give it another chance. You know, a lot of people were talking about it, and I thought eh, mm-hmm. that was okay. But yeah, a lot of people praise it. So I feel I th- it's better the second time around because you understand some of the characters in some of the directorial choices better. Yeah, once you know the ending. Like, I agree. Like some movies, you just anyways, have to. So we're not here to talk about Baba Duke. We're here yes, to talk about. Yes, you got to move away from the Baba Duke. <laughs> but yeah, I would say Tara is another one that's my favorite. Mm-hmm. But uh, I forget her name. Randy's niece. She was interesting. Um, I liked her too. the The twin. She yeah, the twin. Definitely needs a YouTube channel. Like she I would does. hollow love if there's like some offset that she, her character has a YouTube channel. She seems like the type that would have because she knows mm-hmm. her shit on horror movies. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I thought that was interesting. So what about uh, some of the dislikes? I There's things I want to say, but I also... Is this going to be spoiler-free or not spoiler-free? Like, uh, We can jump into spoilers eventually. Okay, so... Spoiler free, what I didn't like. Okay. I don't know if there's actually anything that I didn't like. There was just so many well-balanced things about it. As the story's progressing and they're trying to figure out within the stab, is it stab? The movies in the universe? As they're trying to figure out the killer within the stab rules, Like, it really messed with your head about who is the killers. So that's just another thing that I liked. I can't think of anything without spoiling things that I didn't like. They did focus heavily on the first stab, but then Mm -hmm. they also (laughs) sort of made fun of the sequels, like the stab (laughs) eight. I love the meta shit about that. (laughs) I know. It got really, really meta. Like, I was like, man, how, how far can we take this? How many walls are you going to break here? <laughs> they broke all the walls. I don't think there was one left that they couldn't. I mean, one of the no. characters is named Wes, for crying out loud. I mean, obviously, that's a nice little <laughs> nod to Wes Craven. So, mm-hmm. um, But I, I will say, there was... I, this, this whole thing, like, I didn't hate it. I'm going to jump into spoilers a little bit, but uh, Billy Loomis... They focused on him, and you find out that the main character, Sam, is related to him. It's it's her father. And, you know, it's revealed that she tells her sister about it. But for me, they didn't... Her half-sister, to clarify. Uh, That's right. Different fathers. Right. And that's something that confused me at first, because I thought, wait, is it, like, does he have two daughters? What's going on? But... That's true. I forgot about that. And the mom I, had an affair and got pregnant and lied about it, and it destroyed the family. Shame on her. She's the true villain. That comes really quick, and that's not a spoiler. Yeah, that, that is that's true. <laughs> but I feel like they could have explored that a little bit more so it could make sense. Mm-hmm. They just sort of jumped into it, and you see the de-aged Billy Loomis trying to motivate her to, to mm-hmm. you know, just stab a couple of people on the way and i just think that towards the end it kind of fell flat Um, that was what i wanted to talk about as my least favorite it's honestly my only complaint as of right now seeing it one time is how forced that it felt like it was a dynamic a, a dimension of the movie that they didn't necessarily play around with. We didn't get enough stakes with it because we don't know when did that start Did she end up in a psychiatric facility? We know she's medicating because of it, but what's all of that stuff around there? Um, And how is it playing into her not trusting people? Because it's very clear she as a character, Sam as a character does not trust anyone. She even has a hard time trusting her her boyfriend. So there's a lot about her. 
she left and mm -hmm. she just ran away and she was at odds with her sister. She has a hard time trusting people, like you said, and she didn't speak to her family. So who knows what she went through as time mm -hmm. went on, knowing what she knew about, and she has access to the internet, knowing about what Billy did and what Stu did, and that fucks with your mind. Mm -hmm. So I would have been interested to see some flashbacks or just even glimpses of things relating to that with how much emphasis they put on it, but how little detail or how much of the story's plot, how much of the plot it actually played into. Like, there has to be deleted <clears throat> scenes. Like, there has to I be. Honest I honestly thought we were going to get flashbacks. I th I'm thinking to myself, the only thing that could save this mm -hmm. is flashbacks. So yeah. we know what's going on because they didn't tell you who the mom was or anything. They just... It, like I said, it just fell flat. So if there are some deleted scenes I, that can explain that, that would be great. I'm not opposed to not really knowing the mother. I think that would have been too many characters with how large the friend group is. And I think it really was actually telling with how absent the mother was in their lives. I mean, the mother's out of the country when Tara gets attacked and stabbed in the beginning and she's in the hospital. And the mother can't get home because she's at a conference. So to me, that really added to the dysfunctionalism of the family. I think it would have taken care. away from that dynamic aspect if the character actually showed up and was present at all. Right. I think, well, it's fun. I guess in the I situation- I say character, just, but there's no actual character because there's yeah, no, nobody it's just, playing. It's just, you have to think of it all in your mind. So I guess in a situation mm -hmm. like this, maybe they didn't want to add too much and the less is more. So, um, there's that, I guess. But other than that, the other small little issue I had was just how all of these characters seem to be experts on all of this stuff. And everybody was just talking about what they knew about these movies. And they're all just like throwing theories at one another. I'm like, this is too much. We have like five Randys in this room. We I'm not opposed to that. Have you not watched other horror YouTuber streams? Like, this is a friend group who loves horror. Yes. I don't and, think and... it was like, it, to <laughs> me, it's, it's unrelatable is in my R, my IRL friends aren't as into horror as I am with like you and a lot of the other horror community. Like, yeah. we can talk like that. We can talk like that. If we were in the same room, you know that's how it would go down. <laughs> Of course. I just so think I'm not opposed to them all having some some level of expert or familiar. What is words are hard familiarity. <laughs> I think that's the word I'm going for with uh, a franchise that's based off their hometown. Like I, to me, that did not seem unrealistic. When people like were saying, "Oh, you don't know what happened here," I'm like, "How could you know? And how could you not know? You live in Woodsboro." But I think maybe for me it was just hard to keep up with everybody and what they had mm -hmm. to say and i'm like okay everybody slow down for god's sake but other than that that was it as far as my dislikes but it was really cool it's, like I, it's crazy yes everything else was great you know i liked the the performances and the chemistry between the old and new mm -hmm. characters like it's always great to see Neff Campbell, Courtney Cox, and David Arquette, because they have great chemistry with one another, mm -hmm. especially with Dewey's character this time around. He's really going through it, and you feel bad I for him. I like that they put that in there the way that they did, and the little details they put into his background of where he was living, his even the performance, David Arquette's performance was freaking spectacular. Just He was in so much pain and had so much regret, but he also had some level of hope that it's just like, ah. Yes. And I think the fact that David Arquette and Courtney Cox did get divorced years ago, I think that sort of added to the character. Because were they actually on, really married? I didn't know that. They were, yes, they were. They mm -hmm. were married for almost, I want to say, like a decade. Wow. Just, it was like after, yeah, around the time they did uh, Scream 3, they were married, and then they were still married when they did the fourth one, and they sort of got divorced after that, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So I think having that real life experience, having that in the movie, I feel like that added. I, I think David Arquette may have used that um, for his performance to feel the way he feels. Like, and, and it felt so real when you see him and. And Gail interacting and whatnot, and you just 
it's just really sad to see how all of that went down in the movie. Okay, so speaking of spoilers and non-spoilers, should we go into that whole thing? Like, okay, you if you're watching, come back in like you're five watching, minutes. If you're watching <laughs> this now and you don't want to know what goes down, <laughs> I suggest you stop now because we're about to go into some spoilers. Now, I want to say I'm, I'm hurting, Angela. I'm hurting because. Wait, you didn't give them enough time to leave. No, they look okay. So we're gonna five. <laughs> now they've left. Now they've left. Okay, they're gone. They're all gone. <laughs> so for those of you who've seen it, thank you for sticking around. But I'm hurting. I was not. I did not see this coming. They, our boy Dewey, he he was taken down, stabbed by one of the killers, and I was sad. I was not ready I for was... that. Sad too, but when it was gonna happen, you knew it was gonna happen. As soon as he went off that elevator, you're like, Dewey, Dewey, how many, how many times have you survived? Like, exactly. and you weren't alone. Maybe that's the only reason you survived. You weren't actually alone. Like Somebody luck, was there to witness shit. Luck was always on his side, mm -hmm. and when he was talking about. You know, you got to shoot him in the head. I was like, yeah, yes, you know that. We don't have to go over there and show us how it's done. <laughs> like, it's too late. You should just go. You should just keep running. You should have done that before you left. Yeah, yeah it's too late. And and it's really sad because what caused his death was receiving a phone call from the woman that he loved. And it was just poor timing. And mm -hmm. It's, it's just really sad to see how that went down. There. I thought that was tragic, poetic, like some Shakespeare yes. level bullshit where you're like, no, no. And you're like, Why? it's very tragic and so it ironic. It hurt so much. My heart. It, it was just really sad. I, mm. I could not believe that. But, and, and I just like when you see Sydney and Gail mourning, it's just really sad because, like, Dewey saw Sydney like a sister. He always protected her. And it's mm -hmm. like there's something about Dewey's character that you feel calm when he's around. You feel safe because he was always the one that was protecting everybody, no matter what the he's situation. Like a rock. Yes, in a way. He was the rock. Right. Well not the rock, the Dwayne Johnson. No, not the not the Dwayne Rock Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I get what you're saying, but um, mm -hmm. I, it was really cool to see all of the familiar faces again. Like they, they all knock it out of the park every single mm -hmm. time. But um, what did you think of the third act? Define where the third act start when they said enter the third when act they, in the movie. When they reveal, when they reveal everything, who the killers okay. are and everything. Um, I'm gonna brag. I called one of the killers in the first 20 minutes of the movie. I also killed, or uh, excuse me, I bragged about one of the killers. I, I, uh, man, I got everything mixed up. I'm like, I got tongue tied here. I also. I'm called, contagious with my words. It's my fault. It's okay. It happens. I also called one of them. Who did you pick? The boyfriend? I picked the boyfriend. I was like, okay. it's going to be the boyfriend because their relationship is so new. It, it felt very right that this could have been planned and he could have been a plant to get to know her and, you know, be involved in some way and at least pushing her when the time came to come home because her sister was going to be dead, but she didn't he die. Was... So either way, it worked for the killers. He hid in plain sight. Mm -hmm. You know, he tried to seem as easy or um, as innocent as possible. Um, and I think they did a good job with that because you would, and Dewey called it immediately. Don't get too close to the loved one. He's like, I can't believe this. Dewey knew this immediately and nobody fell for it. And then meanwhile, I knew that the best friend, um, I forgot her name. I think it was Abby. Amber. Or Amber. I was close. Mm -hmm. the, the scene in the basement with Randy's um, niece when she followed Dude, her down. That was brilliant dialogue, that scene with them going back and forth. It's like, well, I don't think um, the niece I don't, is the killer, but I don't know about Amber. And the way things went back and forth, I was like. She just seemed like she had a lot of hate in her. And that's what, mm -hmm. that's where I started suspecting because I'm thinking it, it was just, Randy's niece was just messing with her. There's a lot of mind games there. 
And I'm like, if you know, when I first saw it, I was like, it's one of these two. It can't be the niece. Like, how dare you? Randy would be rolling over in his grave. If Randy that would come, come taunt your ass and make you regret it. Exactly. He's like, Jesus Christ, you're killing people? Don't you know the rules? Oh, like, <laughs> going on to that, Randy's niece and Randy, when she was watching the actor portraying her uncle and all that shit, I was like, oh my God, I am so in love with this scene. I am so dying inside right now with horror movie happiness. And I'm just like, you're do you're doing exactly what you're telling him not to do. Look behind you, and I like, just I love that click on her how, face. Like, oh fuck, maybe I should. How meta can you get with that situation? She's like, uncle. And it's like, look behind you. No, you turn around. You turn yes. around. <laughs> I loved that scene. Honestly, that's probably one of my favorite scenes. Yeah. Which is hard to say because there's so many. Like you said earlier, so much good chemistry with everyone. It's hard to top what would be your favorite but i think right. that has to be up there that scene was a wonderful homage to the original film mm -hmm. because like i said the focus was on the first stab movie but basically screamed the first one mm -hmm. so i just I, I think that the directors i forget their names the guy that did uh ready or not they handled this movie carefully they did mm -hmm. they were inspired by wes craven's work and that's why they became directors so i think they handled this very carefully um with everything you know whether you like certain things or not they hit a home run with this um mm -hmm. i think if they had changed a couple of things it would have been an ultimate game changer um but it not my favorite but still a good movie overall you don't want to put it as your favorite it you cannot top the original the original for I me was gonna say, the original's oh. top tier for sure but i would put this underneath it a lot of people have been saying this is the best since the original. Mm -hmm. So I since the original, not since, best overall. Since, no, no, no. Since the original, so for mm -hmm. some people it would be second place. For me, I would say maybe third place because I'm. Some people have been saying it's better than four because four was just a lot of. It was very meta, and it's like they weren't taking themselves seriously. They were poking fun at themselves. But this one was I more loved serious. Four. So four was great. Emma Roberts was so evil in that movie. <laughs> it was like you, she was born to play an evil woman. I didn't see the killer coming in that one, and I watched it for the first time last year um, in preparation for for this movie. I was watching all of them. I got uh, one of them right. <laughs> but I didn't. I I couldn't gauge the killers in that one. So okay. Well, it's some, it's like I said, it's a guessing game every time because mm -hmm. it's always primarily two killers. I was hoping for a third. I was hoping Stu would still be I, alive. <laughs> but. I was wondering if there was going to be three with some of the shenanigans they pulled off as Ghostface. Like, I was like, there might yeah. be three, especially when you pull in the distance of where Sam was living at the time, too, and finding out the boyfriend's in on it. It's like, okay, is there a third one? So I was half expecting, honestly, I was wondering if Tara was in on this shit. I thought, um, too, At many points, I was like, like that's how far... kind of fucked up that she let herself get that beaten up and destroyed. I mean, her leg was broken, like... When all of that was going down, I started to suspect at first, I'm like, how far could can they take this? Like, to willing to get beat up just to prove a point but then you know that's not what happened there <laughs> but mm -hmm. uh thank but thankfully it didn't because that would have messed up a lot of things <laughs> but anyway so overall how many zombie will you give this five zombie awesome awesome and <laughs> we'll, like, we'll, make, we'll make it ten we won't all right it's ten five. um i'm gonna say Scream is one hell of a good time. Mm -hmm. Strange Monkey approved. So we both enjoyed it overall. High five. High yeah. Five. Boom. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't seen Scream, go watch it. The new one. Uh, not to be confused with the original one. Yeah, I don't is... get getting on that. I ever since Halloween came out, now it's like we let, let, let's get people in the theater with calling it the original name. Like mm -hmm. that'll work. That'll just conf it won't confuse anybody at all. 
But um, also, a uh, little Scream trivia for you. Did you know that the original title for Scream, the original from 96, mm-hmm. was called Scary Movie? I not a surprised. I'm not opposed to it <laughs> because the actual titled scary movie is a spoof on this. So they would have had to rename that. Yeah. What would so, be funny is if in an alternative universe that one is scary movie and scary movie screen. Yes, I, that would have been awesome. But anyway, um, so there, there's your scream trivia. So ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't seen Scream, need to check it out. And also. Would you like to tell the world about this awesome artwork right I'd here? Love to tell the world about this awesome artwork. I drew that. That's one of my monster heart designs. It's Ghostface. He's available as a print and a sticker. And I have other ghost face based fan art on my website, morbidheartdesigns.com. And in fact, I love this movie so much that I am offering 25% off any screen item until. What did I say? January 28th. Use code SCREAM to do that. I bet you weren't anticipating that whole splurge. I was. This is why I gave you the floor. Oh, your stuff. So (laughs) make sure, ladies and gentlemen, you go to Mm morbidheartdesigns.com. She has a lot of great artwork, and it deserves to be seen by many people. So do that. It's going to be in the description. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Angela, thank you so much for joining me. As always, it's always a pleasure to collaborate with you. So, everybody. Thanks for any- having me for an IRL conversation. You are very welcome. So, ladies and gentlemen, put your favorite scary movie in the comment below. And thank you so much. And have yourselves a good fright. <laughs> <laughs>